In this lecture, we will be examining the formal structures of the North Vietnamese military. Included in this discussion will be combatants of the National Liberation Front, which was known to the West as the NLF or the Viet Cong. Uh, the Vietnamese communists built, in relatively rapid fashion, um, a formidable fighting force that essentially won a war of attrition against a much more powerful and well-armed U.S. military. As you can see on this slide, the names used by the armed forces of North Vietnam changed over time. During the First Indochina War, the military forces of the Vietnamese communists underwent a number of restructuring and reformulation phases. The permanent name of the North Vietnamese military, the People's Army of Vietnam, emerged during the war with the French. The PAVN was a unified military system composed of four branches during the Vietnam War. In the 1990s, a branch known as the Vietnam Marine Police was added. This is akin to the U.S. Coast Guard. One advantage to this single command structure was the reduction of inter-service rivalries, which was a problem that plagued the United States in the Vietnam War. That being said, the healthier aspects of competition between branches get muddled under a unified and stratified command structure. The Vietnam Border Defense Force, as the name implies, has traditionally been responsible for maintaining the integrity of the country's borders. The original name of the branch, when created in 1959, was the People's Armed Police, and the current name, which you can see on this screen, was adopted in 1979. I think of this branch as perhaps the equivalent of the American Homeland Security Agency, only with greater use of heavier weapons. North Vietnam sent pilots to China and the USSR in the late 1950s and early 1960s to train on modern jets. However, the formal use of uh, air power in combat by the North Vietnamese did not occur until 1964. The VPAF was primarily a defensive branch of the military, and it rarely conducted air operations into South Vietnam until late in the war. This, of course, was due to the tremendous advantage that the Americans had over the skies in Vietnam. The image on this slide is from 1967, and it depicts North Vietnamese pilots in front of a Soviet-built MiG-17. Uh, the no North Vietnamese uh, Vietnam People's Air Force recorded its first kills of U.S. aircraft in 1965. Initially, the North Vietnamese relied heavily on the MiG-17, but later the MiG-21, which you see here, became the most numerous jet fighter in the VPAF. Aircraft losses for the North Vietnamese are tricky to analyze. North Vietnam lost approximately 200 fighters in the war with the United States. Um, the U.S. lost over 4,000 aircraft, not counting helicopters. However, American losses to MiG-17s and MiG-21s constituted a very small fraction of uh, fighter and bomber losses in the Vietnam War. The greatest number of American aircraft downed during the Vietnam War were as a result of the North Vietnamese air defense system. This was an integrated network of anti-aircraft guns and surface-to-air missiles along with, again, the uh, jet fighters. By 1968, the North Vietnamese air defense system was perhaps the most sophisticated in the world, and many of their weapons were radar-guided. Former Air Force Chief of Staff General J.P. McConnell described the area around Hanoi as the greatest concentration of aircraft weapons that has ever been known in the history of defense of any area in the world. Another effective characteristic of the North Vietnamese air defense system was the ability to adapt, as was the case in learning how to subvert American radar jamming devices, which temporarily disrupted uh, North Vietnamese air defenses in 1967 and 68. The principal surface-to-air missile, or SAM missile, used by the North Vietnamese was the Soviet S-75 Divina, known to the world as the SA-2. The Divina, the S-75, is depicted in the image on this slide. These are um, at a uh, military museum in, um, I believe, in Bosnia-Herzegovina. The Vietnam People's Navy 
originally named the Riverine and Maritime Force, was relatively small during the war with the United States. And the Navy focused on sea-based surveillance and coastal defense operations. The main component of the North Vietnamese Navy was a ship known as the Swatow, S-W-A-T-O-W. This is a, uh, a small patrol boat without torpedoes or missiles. These uh, Chinese-built vessels were armed only with small 37-millimeter guns, and thus they did not make very effective attacked vessels against superior American ships. Um, the North Vietnamese also possessed a few Soviet-built motor torpedo boats, as well as some minesweepers, some light patrol craft, and a few sub-chasing vessels. Pictured on this slide is the Chinese-built P-6 patrol boat, which the North Vietnamese began using in 1973. Prior to this, uh, the North Vietnamese used a smaller P-4 patrol boat. Uh, the principal reason for the North Vietnamese Navy was logistical. American air surveillance meant that few uh, vessels could travel to North Vietnam without being spotted and attacked by American aircraft and American destroyers. The mainstay of Vietnamese communist military power was the uh, ground forces. During the American phase of the war, Westerners referred to ground forces from North Vietnam as the North Vietnamese Army, or NVA. Communist insurgents in the South were known to Westerners as the Viet Cong. Um, it is important to note that both the NVA and the Viet Cong operated under the same command structures. We'll talk about those in a few slides. Calculating the size of the NVA and Viet Cong ground forces is somewhat difficult as, in one sense, every able-bodied citizen was potentially available for military service. The best estimates suggest that at its peak, the North Vietnamese fielded about a half million armed troops. However, the North Vietnamese leadership um, consistently only attempted to meet American troop increases, assuming, and assuming correctly, that it would win eventually in a war of attrition. If we are to include local defense forces and militias, uh, the v North Vietnamese military potential at its peak, along with um, southern communist allies, could be as close to as many as four million armed combatants were they all summoned at any one time. The president of Vietnam is elected by the National Assembly. The National Assembly is an elected body, but only political organizations affiliated with or endorsed by the Communist Party can participate in Vietnamese elections. This makes Vietnam a one-party socialist republic. Initially, Ho Chi Minh was a powerful president, but by 1960 he became a figurehead. And real power after 1960 in Vietnam, in North Vietnam, and then later in the unified Vietnam, has been wielded by the General Secretary of the Communist Party. And direct responsibility for the military uh, falls under the General Secretary. The Viet Cong were controlled by a DRV administrative structure known to the Americans as the COSVN, or the Central Office of South Vietnam. The VC fighters have been categorized in three main groups. The main force units consisted of full-time fighters who were born in the South and received training in the North before returning to fight. Most of these fighters were party members and they operated uh, very often in battalion and regiment formations similar to the NVA, although they were noted for um, some small unit actions. Regional VC units were also full-time soldiers, but they generally served within or very close to their home provinces. These regional forces were not as well armed as the main force units. Typically, they operated in small unit actions of company size or smaller. And the local guerrillas uh, rounded out the VC. These part-time fighters focused on lower-level actions such as sniping, mining, um, laying booby traps, construction responsibilities, and transportation. These were typically peasant farmers with low levels of training, uh, very often illiterate, and they had limited access to weapons, and uh, they were under the control of local NLF operatives. The North Vietnamese Army operated under similar structures as Western-style armies, beginning at the top with the division and working on down to the squad level. The typical NVA division had an effective battle strength of about 10,000 soldiers. 
Both the Viet Cong and the NVA structures utilized what was known as the system of three. There were, for example, three cells to a squad, three men to a cell, three squads to a platoon, three platoons to a company, and so forth. Finally, cadres, political cadres, were assigned to each level of both the NVA and VC structures all the way down to the company level. This became a form of a dual or parallel uh, administration that continually oversaw the political goals of the revolution and to make sure that they were being followed by uh, every participant in the war. Some cadres operated openly and were known to um, the rest of the members of the unit. While some were undercover operatives, um, the cadres had their own chain of command, again, that uh, mirrored in rank and structure um, the same ranks as in the regular military. Generally speaking, um, any disagreements that arose between military officers and the political operatives, if they were of equivalent rank, would usually result in the political cadres having the last word. Rank definitely could outweigh politics, um, but a higher level military officer would be somewhat reluctant to challenge the political decisions made by a bold, lower-ranking political cadre. Well, this brings to a close our brief look at the structures of the Vietnam People's Army.